Thanks for taking time to listen in on the mentorship on demand training for ending your connection well. We're hoping that you're listening to this and watching this a couple of weeks before your connection ends so you can start to prepare and get ready for how you want to end your connection with your mentor or mentee. So what I'm going to present here just in the next few slides is a little bit about the reflection process, how to plan those last meetings, maybe it's multiple meetings, um, some feedback, um, how to give and receive feedback. And then also ways to celebrate and some next steps. So let's dig in. The first thing that you want to do is just like you've given time to your connection, you want to give time to this reflection process. So what I will say about these questions here is that they're they're not static, right? Like mentees, if you see a, a question on the mentor list that you're like, oh, I really like that question. I kind of want to use that one. It's okay. Um, there's just some sample questions here for mentors and mentees to kind of use to reflect on, you know, what has the progress of your goals been, what has worked well, you know, what obstacles were encountered. And so really taking some time to think through what has happened here in this time that you've had this connection and both of you reflect and be ready to share some of your reflections um, with each other. Um, again, we encourage you to do this, you know, a, a couple of weeks out before the connection ends. So you really have time to process and plan um, that final meeting, what you might find when you're um, planning that final meeting is that you need more than one meetings. So just some reflection tips and tricks. Just remember a, a few key things here, right? Delayed gratification. I think sometimes we, we don't necessarily have that in our world as much, but there definitely can be a piece of mentoring. And what I mean by that is you may have achieved your goals. You may have not achieved all your goals and that's okay too. But sometimes there's things that happen much later that you didn't realize that you were gaining at the time. So maybe you were talking through with your mentor or your mentee about a situation or a goal and you kind of felt like it, it didn't come to fruition. But, you know, six months down the road, you're like, oh, this is coming back up. I do remember this. And so that concept of delayed gratification and just in your reflection, thinking about what are things that I haven't gained right now but recognizing that it could come later. Um, keeping in touch with your partner to share new insights through time can be very beneficial. So we encourage you to do that as well. Look at what you're reflecting on. And again, do you need more than one kind of final meeting with your mentor partner? Sometimes the reflection process can take quite a bit of time. And so considering that you might need more than one meeting to go through this reflection process. Acknowledge any obstacles that came up and either claim responsibility, right? And normalize them. That is part of our normal life. Things get in our way with the best of intentions. Be honest with yourself and then with your mentoring partner and just acknowledge those things that got in your way as a process for thinking through your goals. Once you identify those obstacles, it can actually keep continue helping you as you keep working on those goals. So it's important to acknowledge them and just normalize them that it's that's part of life. And then think about, do you need more time in your connection? We have set up um, most of your you know, connections to be at a three month mark. Some people get done with their connections in a month and a half. They finish their goals, they, thank you very much, and they kind of move on to another connection. Some connections have lasted in the system for over a year because they're really um, going deep into some goals um, and just kind of working together well, and so they wanna keep going. You can change the end date um, in your connection plan. If you need any help figuring out how to do that, uh, just email mentorship at ship.org and we can help you with that. But the timing of your connection is totally up to you. Planning your last meetings, right? There, there could be more than one again. So here's some things to think about. Set the agenda to really share the reflections open and honestly, and I love this picture over here on the right. I don't know about you all, but I love to cook. And what I think about these, these meeting agendas is they're kind of a recipe, right? Um, which um, you can pick and choose things that you like. Sometimes when I follow a recipe for the first time, I follow it exactly. And then as I kind of start to get familiar with a recipe, I change it up. And so this is kind of the recipe agenda for a reflection meeting. Um, but but set that agenda to really be open and honest and give some time about that for yourself and for your mentoring partner. 
If there's any critical feedback that you all need to give to each other or receive, plan how to communicate that. Think that through really well. Um, and that can be very beneficial and helpful too. Um, and plan how to receive it. I think a normal part of any mentoring connection is that there are critical learning pieces for yourself and for your partner. And sometimes we perceive those things as bad. Um, and I certainly understand that. I've been through that process when I had to receive or give critical feedback where there's that anxiety and feeling kind of of dread. But just to normalize that, that's a normal part of this mentoring and growing process, that there's going to be things that you knocked it out of the park and you did great, you did very well, and there's things that you didn't. And so just to receive that and share that critical feedback um, and learn from that, how do I move forward? What do I want to take from that? Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. And then also plan time to celebrate. The fact that you're even listening to this, the fact that you've even got to the point where you are planning a, a reflection, kind of how to end your connection well meeting is reason to celebrate. Um, many mentoring connections don't make it to this point. And so the fact that you have um, continued on, whether you've accomplished all your goals or not, is reason to celebrate. So take time to do that as well. So let's talk a little bit about critical feedback tips. Let's be honest, this isn't something that any of us are experts at, right? Um, it's, a, it's a process that we learn how to do this um, and how to receive this. I am someone who really struggled with this and I learned that actually by um, avoiding situations of receiving or giving, giving critical feedback tips only made the situation worse. So now I actually see it as a true benefit while it isn't my most comfortable thing to do, it is a necessary part and it's very helpful um, in our growth. And so if you are someone who's going to be giving some critical feedback, think about a feedback sandwich. And if you've never heard of this concept before, you could probably Google it and find lots of examples about it. But the concept is that the two pieces of bread are something positive that you want to say. And, and whatever is in the middle of the sandwich is the critical feedback. So you start with that first piece of bread, something like, thank you so much for the time that you've invested in this, in this mentoring relationship. I've really received a lot from it. Here are things that I think could have gone better and start to name and be specific, um, kind of going through the rest of this list, avoid assumption statements, but giving them that critical feedback in the middle and then ending your feedback with, you know, but again, the time that you invested in this connection was really beneficial to me and I'm so grateful for that. And so think about how you give that feedback sandwich. So you're giving something positive at the beginning and the end um, and in the middle is the critical feedback that you give. When you give critical feedback, again, be specific. Don't just say, well, I really didn't get anything out of it when, you know, you, you know, these kind of things happen, but but be specific. You know, at this meeting, this this concept and, and this thing that we were talking about, I just really didn't get, um, or hey, it just felt like our, our meetings were always getting moved and we were really struggling with time management here. Whatever the thing is, be as specific as you can. Avoid assumption statements. Don't place a judgment on why it happened. Just talk about what happened. When you start making assumption statements, people start to get very defensive because what they're hearing about what you assumed why something happened may not be the truth for them. They may know some other reason that they just weren't able or willing to share with you at that moment about why something was happening. And so what they are doing when you are making those assumption statements is in their mind, they're defending themselves and they're not hearing what you're really saying about what happened. So please don't put any judgments on it. Just talk about the what happened, the, the situation, without assuming why it happened. You can ask why it happened, I will say that, but don't make those assumptions. Again, focus on the behavior, not the person. Some things that can really help that is using the I statements. Again, this is another very common um, technique that you can Google search about I statements. And so an I statement could be, I felt that when you change the meetings all the time, it meant this wasn't, you know, it, it wasn't a priority 
or I, I felt that when the meetings got moved all the time, that it really caused me to have to readjust my schedule, kind of things like that. And so again, focusing on the behavior, not the person, and you're putting it in the context of how it impacted you, which is something that they can't necessarily in their mind argue with, right? That's your truth and what happened and how it impacted you. Um, and so they won't be spending their time trying to necessarily justify that as much. Avoid overwhelming with a long list of feedback. You don't want your sandwich to be two tiny pieces of thin bread and then this big, you know, thing that they have to digest in the middle, this, this big, you know, whatever your sandwich is, is made of. Um, the reality is, is that people can usually process critical feedback for like one or two things, right? If you have a big laundry list, pick your top two or three things that you really want to talk about um, and avoid overwhelming with a, with a very long list of feedback. Um, really think about your tone and maintaining a constructive tone in it. Again, um, like we talked about in the, in the initial trainings, how important it is to have your camera on so they can see your face. Um, so they can put that in relation to the tone that they're hearing with your voice and really leave space for questions. And when you give space for questions, really give space. Be quiet. Let them ask questions. Recognize, too, that they might need time to process what you're saying. So they might not have any questions at that moment. And that may be another reason why you need to have multiple meetings that you might want to put kind of a pause in that let them reflect, let them think, and then come back to another meeting to be able to talk through. Um, if you're on the receiving end of some critical feedback, again, like I said, this is something I don't know that any of us ever get great at, right? It's, it's a process, but understanding and knowing that this is intended to help us. I don't think any mentor or any mentee goes into this process because they just really want to give somebody critical feedback or they really want to receive critical feedback but it's an important part of the process and just remembering the benefits of getting that feedback and their motivation. They didn't come into this because they wanted to be mean or they wanted to hurt anyone's feelings. They came into this because they wanted to grow. They wanted to develop their skills and they want to, you know, expand their ship familia. And so really remember their motivation in this. And that's, that's why they're doing this and assume the best of intentions. They really want to help they want to address these things. It's not because they're just wanting to tell you something that, that might be hard to listen to. When you're receiving it, be a good listener. Um, my mother used to give me a hard time about this as I was growing up. I think probably in our, in our conversations, a lot of times I was listening to what she was saying to me, thinking about how I was going to respond or defend myself, right? We don't want to do that in this situation. You want to be able to spend the time really hearing them and hearing what they're saying, hearing those I statements, hearing what, you know, what the, what the specific situation was rather than thinking about, oh, that's not what it was, or, you know, I need to defend that, but really hear them. Um, and remember that you don't have to agree with everything. Every time you get critical feedback, it may be that person's truth. And you know in your heart that you've done the, the things that you need to do in the best way that you need to do that. And you can you can listen to their critical feedback and say thank you and acknowledge that it would have been really hard for them to give that feedback. It's again, it's not something that anybody's like, I can't wait to get up today and give somebody critical feedback. But that if it's not something that you need to own, it's not something that you have to take responsibility for you don't have to agree but do listen and assume their best of intentions and again take time to celebrate right again just because you're at this place is reason enough to celebrate so there's some things that maybe you could do do you feel comfortable sharing a celebration of each other on LinkedIn um, and, and sharing what you got um, out of the connection um, or maybe a private email or a note um, I, I think a lot of us probably have like what I have a, a folder or a little box of, of notes that people have sent me as encouragement or thanks over the years. All of us have days where we need that extra dose of encouragement and uplifting. And so think about, is there something that you could send them that they could tangible, that they could hold on to 
um, when they need to give themselves that extra sense of encouragement and accomplishment. There also is that certificate on Cronus. So if you have gone through the whole connection plan and you've you know achieved all the tasks that you, you wanted to achieve and check those off, um, you can earn that certificate on Cronus and post that on your LinkedIn page, share that, different things like that. And then also think about on Cronus, giving your mentor a rating. Um, mentors, as you, or as you know, mentees have to go into the system and find a mentor. So how can your, your comments about what um, you and your mentor were able to accomplish could maybe help someone else and think about that as well. And then just think for yourself, what are other ways that you can celebrate or acknowledge the commitment that you made with each other? Um, I think I've shared before, but I love this photo because it's it's a rare time in a virtual setting, in a virtual mentorship um, relationship where a mentor and a mentee actually got to meet and get together and we were chatting. Um, I was virtual, but they were together and just took a quick screenshot of this happiness, right? They're at the, they were at the end of their connection and just kind of reflecting about what they had gained and you can see it you can feel it in their faces that it was something to celebrate and so take that time to really think about how do you want to celebrate this connection there's just a quick view of that certificate that you can get on mentorship and it will put your name in it automatically it will put what date um, which track you were in um, and whatever and that's something that you can you can use to um, promote that on LinkedIn or however you choose to use that. So just some quick next steps. Please do go in and update your goals and your tasks and what you achieved on Cronus um, in the connection. Again, I've shared before, this data really helps us. Um, we are always looking for, you know, who can help us improve this program, who can help us fund this program, um, and that information is so important to keep this program going for the future and for others. The surveys also definitely help with that. Um, I know sometimes it feels like you probably do surveys and they go into the abyss, but I promise you that we do read all of those surveys. We might not be able to do all of your wonderful ideas, but we definitely um, try to do what we can. So please keep those surveys coming. Know that your closing survey will not be available to you after that connection ends. So please do that closing survey before the date that your connection ends. And then offer to keep in touch with your mentor mentee if that feels like the right move for you, if you feel comfortable with that. Um, again, there's a lot of delayed gratification in these relationships. There are mentors in my life who, I, who have been in my life for over 20 years. We don't talk every day, every year, every month but they're there and there's been different times when I've reached out to them and say, hey, I just want to update you on what's going on, what's going on in your world. Keeping in touch can really help with that delayed gratification piece. And then keep connecting. Working on your own goals is never a complete process, right? So maybe there are some goals that you're still working on that were some of those, those reach and stretch long-term goals that you want to keep working on in a new connection um, and keep using that that Cronus platform um, or the mentoring programs in your regions and your chapters and keep connecting. Congratulations on getting to this point and let us know how we can help you. Feel free to email mentorship at ship.org.